Hi Virgo, welcome to your May 2016 tarot scope. It's Raina here. So I am starting to film my readings and I just did Leo's reading and I was saying that I have to keep these to 15 minutes because these are in high definition and it takes a long time to upload them and then I think I took about 30 minutes. So. I really do want to keep it down to 15 minutes if I can, but we'll see what happens. So I've already laid out the cards, and um, before I begin with the cards for the month of May, I want to talk about some transits that are occurring then, because um, it's very interesting with May. There are um, concentrations of energy in two different places for you. One is going to be in the fourth house of home and family in the sign of Sagittarius. And then the other one is going to be in the ninth house, which is a Taurus energy for you. And so the ninth house is the natural house of Sagittarius. And it is ruled by Jupiter. And by the way, Jupiter is transiting through your sign of Virgo this, uh, this year, or it has been until September. So that has been uh, something that you've had as an influence, a Jupiter cycle, uh, you know, starting a Jupiter cycle with your sign. So that's wonderful. Uh, Jupiter will be turning direct on May 9th. And so in your sign, you may start to feel like um, you will, just your basic sense of self will start to you know, be more um, advantageous for you in some way because whatever house that Jupiter transits, it brings with it luck and expansion. And uh, also another thing about Jupiter and the ninth house is it deals with the bigger picture. So in terms of your own sense of, you know, your um, image and things like that, you may really like rethink a lot of things. You know, Virgo is not the flashiest sign in the zodiac. So in terms of like looking at yourself physically about how you present yourself to other people, you may not even care about something like that. But it may be on a different level. You may want to um, change, you know, even your profession. And that will naturally affect uh, your image because of that. And the other thing too is that with Jupiter in your sign, it's really helpful to promote yourself. Um, you have luck in this department. So no matter what it is that we're trying to do, whether it's to find a new job or to meet somebody, having good um, PR for ourselves and having Jupiter like in our back pocket is helpful to um, getting us to choose the right, you know, the the right places to go to meet people, the right people to talk to, uh, and having doors open just based on the impressions that we make. So uh, it's it's really a nice thing, and it's also it's starting that that transit. It's just like a general sense of good luck that happens, and you also have the North Node in in your sign as well. So there's almost like a sense of destiny about it to have both of these in the same sign. So um, let me talk too about the fact that um, we have these um, energies in the, the ninth house, uh, like the sun in Taurus, the new moon in Taurus, which is happening on May 6th. Uh, in, in your ninth house, it could be new beginnings related to anything concerning higher education or your life philosophy, you may decide to, to, to take up some study of some religious or spiritual um, topic or practice, or you may also, you know, book uh, plane tickets because the, the, the ninth house deals with foreign travel. And when people are traveling, they experience expansion as well because they're um, kind of broadening their horizons. So, um, it's a very expansive house, the ninth house. It also deals with publishing, advertising. If that's in your line of work, which I would, you know, think that a fair number of you 
are in professions, Virgo, where you are dealing with your communication skills since you're ruled by Mercury, and that might be um, in advertising or PR and, and publishing. All of these things are ninth house, and all of these things you may excel at, and you may, if you're looking for a job, you may be getting jobs in this area because there's so much energy being generated in this house with the sun there as well as Mercury retrograde. I forgot to mention that. You know, Mercury, your ruler, is in retrograde motion in that ninth house until the 23rd of the month or the 22nd. <laughs> I don't have my ephemeris in front of me. I can't remember. I think it's the 22nd, actually. Um, probably depends where you are in the world. But um, right around that time, uh, when Mercury turns direct, you will start to see more things flowing when it comes to, you know, if you had some book that you're trying to publish, maybe that has kind of hit a snafu, or maybe you've been revising, which is a good activity to do during a retrograde, a Mercury retrograde. But there's all kinds of things. Maybe you were supposed to travel. Now you will be able to get the green light. Um, Mercury will be in this house, um, then we have uh, the sun obviously is there for the first few weeks. The new moon, the new moon is going to be there on the the sixth, and um, so that's uh, Venus is going to be there for uh, until about the twenty fourth of May, and so this is very helpful. You may meet up with somebody or fall in love with somebody who is um, a foreigner. And you may, if you are traveling, you may meet somebody and fall in love with somebody in a foreign country. So that's very interesting and exotic and, and uh, adventurous. And then also we have this concentration of energy in your fourth house of home and family. We're going to have a full moon there in Sagittarius at one degree of Sagittarius on May 21st. We're also going to have another... Um, full moon there at 29 degrees of Sagittarius in June on the 20th. So you're going to have uh, two successive full moons in the fourth house of home and family. So just be aware of that because that might be significant. It might be uh, the first one may shine a light on something related to your family that you didn't know and then there is some something that comes up and it gets resolved in a month's time. Um, I will say, too, that you have Saturn retrograding in this house, as well as Mars. Now, while Mars was direct in your fourth house, there may have been some issue that was causing uh, contention within your family. Now, it could be either the family that you have right now, if you have children, if you have a home with children. It could be some kind of... Um, in harmonious situation with them, but it could go back to your family of origin. And while Mars is in retrograde, it's kind of like tamping down all of the aggression, uh, but you're going to have to still deal with it in its own way. Like it's going to kind of, um, you know, do the opposite um, when it's in retrograde. It, instead of being overt, it kind of goes covert, this energy. So it may kind of um, be below the surface. You have to make sure that there aren't any resentments that build up. If you're dealing with, let's say you have an aging parent who needs care and you're kind of um, having family squabbles with your siblings over who's going to take care of your parent, um, that kind of thing can happen. So there, there has to be kind of a... Um, a caution, you know, when it's in retrograde motion so that you're not just uh, at each other's throats or doing passive-aggressive kinds of um, behavior to one another. And um, so anyway, um, okay, Virgo, so let's get to the cards. I have separated the month into three parts, early, middle, and late, approximately 10 days each, but the first period is going to end on the 9th when Jupiter goes direct because I do feel 
that, you know, since it has been retrograding for so many months that it is quite um, a turning point when it goes direct. And so the, the middle period will reflect that turnaround. And also remember, it is transiting in the sign of Virgo. So I think that it's particularly significant for Sun and Virgo rising. And then the last portion of the month. So uh, what was so funny was I was, you know, dealing the cards and uh, thinking, okay, what sign is this? Oh, it's, yeah, it's Virgo. The first card I get is the Hermit card, and that is associated with Virgo. So for the, the first um, 10 days, I get uh, the Hermit card, the Nine of Wands, and the Ace of Cups. Uh, just right off the bat, these are both nines. And um, nine is the number of the humanitarian, and it involves introspection. Um, I think it's also the end of a cycle. I feel like uh, with you starting the month with the Hermit card, that you, for some reason, you feel the need to reflect on something, and you're very thoughtful. Maybe you're spending a lot of time by yourself. Um, the, the advice is the, the nine of wands. So in personal relationships, if you have been experiencing some sort of conflict with a partner, you may be kind of going it over, going over it in your head and kind of wondering if it's worthwhile. The advice is to, um, protect yourself. Um, there's kind of a warrior energy associated with this card. But it's definitely not necessarily the case where you're going to be um, an open book because not only are you going to be spending time alone, but the Nine of Wands is a very protective kind of an energy. Uh, it's like setting boundaries. So um, in in a job situation, you may be rethinking the company that you're working for. There may be some reason why you feel like you have to defend yourself. The outcome is the Ace of Cups. So in a business situation, you could get a job offer that is really kind of a heartfelt kind, kind of an offer where it's something that will speak to your heart. It's not just going to be oh good, um, it's very secure, or, or oh good, it's, you know, makes X amount of money. It's something that is like a passion or just a strong feeling of uh, attachment that you have to this particular area of life. And you will, you know, put your heart and soul in it, in other words. For those of you who are in a romantic situation, that could be a new love coming in for you. It's a very positive card all the way around. And um, the other thing about this in a relationship context is it could relate to an actual water sign person. So a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces individual that comes into your life. But since it's an ace, it is somebody that it's at the beginning of the relationship. It's not somebody that you've been dealing with for a very long time. Um, it's possible that, you know, maybe it's somebody at work, too. I mean, it's always possible that these two things are combined. But I do feel like uh, for those people who are open to love, that the first part of May may prove a time when that comes true for you. And then in the middle period, we have the Ace of Wands as the energy, the overall energy, another Ace, another beginning. So th there's like this, um, there's like these things that are starting for you. It's starting to cook for you in May. Um, and you know, um, Taurus is a fellow Earth sign. So even in mid-May, we'll still be with Sun and Taurus. So it's a very um, uh, friendly angle to your Sun or Rising sign. It forms a trine, and this, you know, helps the flow. 
for whatever it is that you want. It's not, there's no resistance. It kind of comes easily. Um, the Ace of Wands can be the beginnings of a, an affair. Um, it could be a new job, you know, your own business. But there's something where you're very enthusiastic about whatever your endeavor is. There's something passionate about this thing. Now, <laughs> the advice is the Wheel of Fortune. I got this uh, card, I think, for another sign in the middle position as well. I mean, in this uh, middle week or middle month period. And again, this is, this is associated with Jupiter, so it's after Jupiter goes direct. Maybe it's just saying to you now you're, you're going to start to see things flowing easier for you. And um, the Wheel of Fortune is just like, you know, you have a wheel. Sometimes uh, you're at the top, sometimes you're below. And you, if, you, if you see this card, it's the person is um, at the top. The, the, the people are at the top, um, you know, and then somebody's like falling off of it. So it depends on, uh, you know, what position you are on the wheel, but you're in an upswing right now. And it's good for luck. It's good for anything to do with uh, propelling your life forward. So that's wonderful. The outcome is the Page of Pentacles. Um, this could be somebody, an earth sign, um, you know. And by the way, uh, just to let you know, this could be a fire sign person that you begin a relationship with. Maybe there's two people. Uh, fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. So if any of those people are in the picture, maybe, you know, maybe you're totally on the market and you're just meeting a bunch of people during this period of time and so you're meeting them and you know kind of deciding you know which person you're more compatible with but um, the the page of pentacles can relate to students uh, it can relate to somebody maybe you're with an earth sign and that person is younger than you um, but it can relate to studies and students so maybe some people will decide that they're going to get more training for whatever they're um, doing. Uh, maybe they need it for their job or maybe they just want it for themselves. Uh, but the Page of Pentacles can also indicate money coming towards you. It may not be like a huge windfall, but it may be um, some sort of financial gift or um, allotment that you get at some point. Also, Pages represent messages, and so this may be a message of an earthly uh, variety, so it might have to do with uh, a career or any kind of um, other practical matters that deal with maybe some possessions or uh, something to do with um, your physical uh, self. Um, anything uh, could relate to that. Um, so. Uh, just keep an eye out for that in the middle period. Uh, by the way, I just wanted to say that the overall card is the Six of Cups. And this is kind of like what um, May is all about for you, Virgo. And the Six of Cups is a card that r can relate to nostalgia for what has come before. So, you know, the past, in other words. And you may be reminiscing about your childhood or your teenage years and also yearning for something that it symbolizes. But it can relate to hooking up with an old fl uh, flame. Uh, so, you know, you may be dating somebody that you knew in the past. And, uh, you know, with Mercury retrograde, you may hear from somebody that you haven't heard from in a while. So I uh, just wanted to put that out there. So in the third... Um, the last period, we have the Strength card as your um, overall energy of that uh, last 10 days. And the Four of Cups in Reverse. So the Four of Cups in Reverse, I think you're going to be coming out of your shell. Uh, and you notice that the Hermit card would represent that shell. So maybe you have been kind of um, keeping yourself um, away from social... Uh, interactions in recent months and you decide that you're going to kind of um, m you know get out and mingle 
uh, the strength card gives you that ability to kind of um, transcend your natural state because Virgo te Virgo people tend to be quite shy and you're not necessarily you know someone who likes to draw attention to yourself and you don't necessarily um, feel like the life of the party but um, whatever happens earlier in the month maybe especially in that middle period I think you're going to feel a, a new have a new wind and that's going to give you confidence and I associate confidence with the strength card because um, it's connected to Leo and so if you've been apathetic about life the four of cups here is reversed and this is actually a much better uh, place for it to be than in the upright position because in the upright position it tends to be very blasé about life or just uh, disinterested unsatisfied and so I feel like you're gonna you know get your creative juices flowing and just be a lot happier um, overall and more engaged with life because of what is happening but the outcome is the four of pentacles and I feel like this means that you're really um, trying to have a firm foundation in your life now remember I told you that we have all that energy in the fourth house because the fourth house um, relates to the home and family but the number four in numerology connects to foundations so with the pentacles you're talking about financial foundations and um, it may be with a specific person who is an earth sign who can who you may end up being a life partner uh, with and building that foundation but maybe it could be just you in your career um, making money and being able to not only support yourself but have money saved because this is about managing your money wisely and saving it and trying to uh, think about your future not just the, the present time so it's a very good card for you know keeping wealth and uh, sometimes it can even be inheritances I, I believe but I, I do see a very active component to this card because it's um, if you see this um, this man he's really holding on to his money so it's not just I mean you have to watch out about being too you know um, um, tight-fisted uh, when it comes to money but on the other hand um, it's also about being really good at managing it and not squandering it so I feel like overall for May that there is a lot of um, good signs that perhaps you know you are going to have a breakthrough um, especially when Jupiter goes direct in the in the second week of the month and possibly new love coming into your life and new job opportunities as well and a, and a new cycle of uh, luck happening for you so Virgo I hope you enjoyed this if you'd like a personal reading click on the link below and take care of yourself bye